Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, in order to maintain energy balance, what we really need to do? So, the amount of energy that we are taking in, in the form of food and the amount of energy that is needed to maintain all the necessary needs of our body like the functioning of our body. So, if you keep that in balance, so we are going, we are not going to lose weight or we are not going to gain weight in that condition. So, so, it means like it is all about the calories, it is all about the energy that is needed to maintain our uh, body function in order to and also the um, amount of calories that is needed for the physical activity and also to digest and absorb the food. So, uh, the uh, energy balance it is basically you know it is calculated as daily energy expenditure. Now, the daily energy expenditure, whatever the amount of energy that is needed to maintain the daily energy expenditure, I will write it as DEE, daily energy expenditure. So, the amount of energy or amount of calories that are needed to maintain this daily energy expenditure, how, how to calculate the da daily energy expenditure. So, the daily energy expenditure, it is the combination of BMR that is a basal metabolic rate and the amount of calories that is needed or the amount of energy that is needed to uh, needed for the physical activity or the physical exercise. So, uh, that is the amount of calorie which will contribute to daily energy expenditure and also the diet induced thermogenesis or the digestion and absorption transport storage of the food that we take in. So, the amount of calories that is needed to do that. So, all this together it is contributing to daily energy expenditure. So, when we know the daily energy expenditure and if your calorie intake per day for that particular uh, daily energy expenditure is equal, then we do not lose weight or we do not gain weight, we simply ma manage that particular weight, we just maintain that weight. Okay? So, if you want to go into calorie deficit, so that means you really need to know what is your daily energy expenditure and the amount of calorie that you are taking in should be less than what is the daily energy expenditure or if you really want to put on the weight then you got to simply take more energy, more calories than the daily energy expenditure that means we are going to accumulate that uh, excess energy in the form of adipose tissue. right? So, let us move on to see like what is the basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate which is also referred as resting metabolic rate although there is a thin line of difference between basal metabolic rate or the resting rate metabolic rate it depends on when we are going to calculate that particular uh, number. right? Now, let us uh, more commonly we, we have this basal metabolic rate which is being used in most of the textbooks. Now, the basal metabolic rate is simply it is the na minimum number of minimum amount of calories that we need to maintain our cellular function. The cellular function can be it can include the cellular transport, it can include uh, all the metabolic pathways that we are running to. Now, uh, maintain the energy needs or the metabolic intermediate needs of our cell to survive. So, overall the cellular function needs the energy and that is basically the basal metabolic rate here. Now, how much is the basal metabolic rate? So, the basal metabolic rate is calculated and expressed in the form of kilocalories uh, per kg per day or kilocalories per day. Now, how much is the basal metabolic rate for a person? For a 70 kg man who is uh, considered as healthy, so that it is the 24 kilocalories per day per kg body weight. right? So, or it can simply put as 1 kilocalories per kg per uh, 1 hour. So, because 24 kilocalories per day, per day means like 24 hours there. So, that means you have 1 kilocalories per kg per hour. So, that is what is the amount of basal metabolic rate uh, energy that we need. So, if a person is a 60 kg person, so that means you really need to uh, like you know so uh, 24 for per day. So, 24 multiplied by 60 right. So, because 24 kilocalories per kg per day right. So, that much is the energy that is needed for maintaining the basal metabolic rate and also the basal metabolic rate can vary from person to person like if the, a taller person or a usually built person uh, they will have more basal metabolic rate than the person who is shorter or the males will have more basal metabolic rate than, uh, and, uh, than the uh, females because females have more adipose tissue which is a metabolically inactive tissue compared to the males 
who is having relatively more muscle mass than the female. So, higher the metabolically active tissue, so the higher the basal metabolic rate and also every 12 deg uh, sorry uh, every 1 degree centigrade increase in the body temperature. So, there is, the, um, uh, there is a more uh, increase like 12 percent increase in the basal metabolic rate. That means, the person who has fever, uh, he will have more basal metabolic rate uh, than the normal person. And also you now exposure to cold, whenever we are exposed to the cold, so there will be uh, uh, increased uh, 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 like energy production here inside the uh, body to maintain the uh, temperature. So, that is when the basal metabolic rate can increase and also like you not know, thyroid hormone. If a person having hyperthyroidism, excess thyroid hormone, they will have more basal metabolic rate than the person who is hypothyroid patient like you no know, having a low thyroid hormone, they will have lower basal metabolic rate. So, like this the basal metabolic rate can vary. So, depending on the condition of that per person, depending on the condition of the environment, basal metabolic rate can vary and uh, I have given you at the basal condition like you no know, 70 kg healthy man. So, the basal metabolic rate or the amount of energy uh, that is needed to maintain the basal metabolic rate is uh, 24 kilocalories per day uh, per kg body weight. Okay. Now, let us move on to see our second energy that uh, uh, energy that is needed to maintain the physical activity or the physical exercise. Now, the physical activity. So, how much is the basal uh, how much is the energy that is need to maintain the physical activity which will contribute to daily energy expenditure. So, the physical activity it can be like you no know, a sedentary a person can be a sedentary worker or maybe a person can be moderate worker or maybe a person is uh, actually uh, working in uh, several hours per day. So, depending on that, if a person is a sedentary worker like a student who is always studying or something like that. So, the um, yeah, physical uh, amount of energy to maintain the uh, physical activities that is there in the sedentary life uh, person, it is 30 percent of the BMR. So, 30 percent of basal metabolic rate is uh, additional uh, calories or the additional energy that is needed to maintain the movement physical activity, mild physical activity whatever the person is doing all the sedentary. Okay. That is 30 percent of BMR is for the sedentary person. Like if the person is like you now working out for 2 hours in, in a day that means it is 60 percent of the basal metabolic rate goes to a person who is a moderately active. And if a person is like you now working out several hours in a day, it is 100 percent of the basal metabolic rate. So, the basal metabolic rate if it is like you now 2000, so for a physically active person for several hours in a day, additional 2000 should go like that. So, sedentary person 30 percent, moderate activity 60 percent and it is a vigorous activity, it is 100 percent or more than the basal metabolic rate. Now, the third component of daily energy expenditure is the DIT, diet induced thermogenesis. Diet induced thermogenesis is also called as specific dynamic action SDA, specific dynamic action or diet induced thermogenesis. What is there in diet induced thermogenesis? So, whenever we consume a diet, so at that time what happens? So, that diet or the food that we are taken which is there in the macromolecular form, it has to be digested, it has to be absorbed, it has to be transported and then it has to be stored. All these functions need to go on and for that you need energy because for digestion, for the contraction of the intestine, absorption process where the transport has to go on, then the uh, means the absorption has to go on through the transport mechanism and then the food has to means that the absorbed molecule has to be transported from one place to another place and then it is stored, right. So, for all these things there is an energy which is uh, spent and that particular energy we re referred as diet induced thermogenesis because when this um, event is going on. So, there will be increase in the body temperature when there is a digestion going on inside our intestine there is slight increase in the body temperature that is why it is called a diet induced thermogenesis right. So, how much is the energy that is needed for this? It is uh, cal calculated roughly around 10 percent of the total calories that we have taken in the diet. So, 10 percent of the calories that we have taken in the diet will go for diet induced thermogenesis and that also becomes part of daily energy expenditure. So, now we know, so what all the components of daily energy expenditure? It is the basal metabolic rate and then the amount of energy that is required for physical activity 
and also the amount of energy that is needed for diet induced thermogenesis all this together is basically contributing to daily energy expenditure now you know you how to calculate daily energy expenditure so calculate your bmr so that means you need to know your weight in kg so it means it is 24 uh, kilocalories multiplied by weight your weight and that is per day that much is your bmr and then you need to add what is your physical activity if you are sedentary you add 30 percent of your bmr if you are a moderate active uh, uh, active person you add 60 percent of your bmr if you are uh, working out for several hour, uh, several hours in a day you can add 100 percent of your bmr and then additionally 10 percent of your calorie that you are taking in the diet so in per day so you really need to add that 10 percent into diet induced thermogenesis all these three things will give you daily energy expenditure so if you want to lose weight you got to uh, spend like you no know, increase the physical activity and uh, thereby bmr is increased that means diet uh, so thereby our cal we go into calorie deficit that means we are going to spend more calories than what we take so that's the calorie deficit there thereby we don't accumulate rather we break the adipose tissue and uh, release those fatty acids uh, for the energy needs okay so if you really want to gain weight so what we need to do you need to consume food more than the daily energy expenditure and that's when we are going to accumulate so this is how uh, the weight uh, balance can be done or the calorie balance can be done so that's all about uh, daily energy expenditure so if you have any questions so put that in the uh, comment section below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel so kindly uh, consider subscription to this channel so that you will get a regular notification as and when i upload a new video and also don't forget to click that bell like uh, bell icon for uh, regular notification in your inbox okay so uh, uh, i will see you in my next video till then you take care